Wow. Wow. Wow, this is this is some really deep stuff. I don't know what just happened, but something happened inside of me. Something snapped, something shaked. I wasn't expecting that either. Ah, uh, sorry. It's okay, it's all right. It's beautiful. <laughs> Monster is like really small, but it had to become that to stop me. Because I'm the hurt child. Became present when you mentioned it. And I didn't realize this until now. There were things that I didn't remember yeah. until now. It's funny, I haven't seen that before. It, it feels like I'm the monster. I'm kind of seeing images of things. Of a, of a world where they can exist. This clarity brings all kinds of answers. It's clear. She like hugged me and then went back to her place, I guess, in my heart. Oh, it wants to come out. <laughs> it wants the bippity boppity boop Cinderella me. Like, <laughs> she's like melted into like my chest. It's like ooey gooey. All week, been finishing things, cleaning up more, started eating vegetables again last week. <laughs> and it kind of just started happening. It's almost like I just finished going through a meditation session. I feel light. Like, you know, when you. When you hit that first joint, like in the morning, and you... I actually feel a lot more um, awake. Discord, I really, like, just increasingly just am impressed by how you handle these calls. It's so cool. I mean, I've heard a lot of them now. It's just, yeah, uh, yeah that thing, like, that you said to me, all is so good. Like, yeah. you can kind of trust me, you know? I only need like, to be kind of trustworthy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. No, mm -hmm. it's great. Um, because, uh, yeah, it like makes, this is about IFS. It's like not about, you know, not about you. But it's right. also really generous of you to do this free of charge. I hope people tell you that enough. Well, I, I feel like I'm winning, so I'm happy to do it. All right. Well, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, just it's like I, it's just totally helpful like i don't know if ifs usually proceeds by like breakthroughs as opposed to like a slow burn but um i just i mean i haven't really had a bad day since we talked last um it just uh yeah just it, it's just things are going well like it's great yeah Good old like parts in harmony, self energy. Yeah. So you you mentioned last time that you don't have much trouble doing check ins. Is that part of it? Are you doing that daily, or is it or is it all just some big insight from our conversation? You know, I mean, like once the sort of once the cast of characters presents themselves, like it's it's almost like too tempting not to check in with her you know it's like mm -hmm. it's so much um it's so enjoyable to check in with them because they're like these new friends that have been hiding or something or like new, you know like they're such weirdos but it's kind yeah. of cool to be able to That's have their company yeah yeah like why like why like i've been ignoring you for so long and you had like so much to say right um you know you yeah, know those like be amazing dreams where you just find another room in your apartment that you didn't know existed at least i have them i'm not and sure i've had that like, dream oh it's the best where you're <laughs> like oh a ballroom oh my god i could have <laughs> used this like i mean i live in a cramped new york apartment so maybe it's mm. that's why but um so it feels like that you know just like oh there's this whole dimension to my psyche that i had no idea nice. so i have like been getting down on the floor with the um the like sort of sad mom um and um and hanging out with her um that one that we talked about um yes 
but there's another there's another part we could talk about today after game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, <laughs> so so what is that part? Um, uh, uh, sure. Yes. Yeah. The, um, the only thing I'm the only pause is if you wanted to have a minute of quiet meditation. Oh yes, uh, I definitely do. If you like that, okay, great. So how about I'll set a timer and then we can get into it. Perfect. Okay. 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 Go ahead. You were with a part. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm sort of, there's this trailhead that I don't, I mean, I have found some ways that it, places that it leads, but I'm not sure um, which one to pursue. And but the trailhead is like, is this sort of not wanting to be touched or hugged side. Mm-hmm. Um, and at times I've thought that there's a part that doesn't want to be touched. And at times I thought there's a protector that doesn't want another part to be touched. And it's mm-hmm. like running interference. Mm-hmm. Um, and one, I keep sort of coming to like a part that has like a protective coating over it. Um, and I don't know if the coating is a separate part or what, but one of okay. them who's in the picture is this like six or seven year old girl that's like either made of stone or coated in stone and is like in this swimsuit that I had at the time and um just uh it like really does not like um having to hold on to someone to stay up in deep water, like learning to swim. Okay. And it's the holding on to like my dad or a swim coach. Um, you know, when I kind of like lost my energy, that's just terrible because it seems like compelled, like drown, you know, touch or drown. Um, Hmm. and it seems like it's involuntary and coerced and, um, but I haven't gotten very far with her or to know her or even to know if she's a part or two parts or the stone is some other entity. Um, I don't know about, maybe you can also help me understand like, are the protector, are protectors and exiles sometimes completely just entwined in each other? Like, I think, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that when we talk about protectors and exiles, it's really just the the most kind of cursory look at what the model is. Um, but for different systems and different parts, the amount of overlap and yeah, understanding if it's one part or four parts sometimes yeah. can just be more confusing. And um, sometimes it's really helpful to to distinguish them all and give them the right labels and other times that can get in the way. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think I sort of said last time that it's kind of this moment that then exploded into all these parts, like sort of a big mm-hmm. bang, you know, like a, like a really scary moment when, you know, I felt like in life, in life where I felt like I was like suddenly leaving my daughter to her stepmother. And, um, But I don't even, like, all the fallout from that Big Bang, I'm still, like, picking up little parts and looking at them and being like, what were you doing? What are you doing? What are you still doing? Um, And I, and some of them, like, I don't know. And I don't want to also force them to conform, you know, to the the model until I, like, have you or a competent facilitator helping me tell them apart, you know? Mm -hmm. Um. So, I mean, we could, if we want to stick to this, like, little girl, I really, I mean, I'm interested in whether the stone um, is what she's made of, or whether it's coating her, or 
what Great. it's about and if she's one or two parts or ten or yeah. Okay. All right. Um, going back to when I have a question about when you said not wanting to be touched or hugged, is yeah. that are you speaking about yourself in the real world or are you speaking only about a part that you've tried to touch or hug? No, I sh a me in the real world. Like, okay. just mm -hmm. a sort of, I mean, it hasn't gone on forever. It just comes and goes. But sometimes, like, I don't know. Like, I just get bridally, at, um, not like cursory hugging and handshaking, but like, you know, someone like, wants to put their arm around me for a long time or I don't know I just well just I can I don't know it's some I'm not I'm not in self mm -hmm. okay so I'm I'm thinking that we should kind of start there um, only because it sounds to me like that's that's the exterior that's the outer layer how it shows yeah. up and then kind of work our way more and more inward and to the possibly much more vulnerable spaces of the child and, and her experiences. That's perfect. Okay, great. So yeah, you can just maybe think of one of those one of those times when you're when you're having that experience and what comes up for you in your body. Okay. Um, I just turn, um, sort of rigid and judging, like, what are the person's intentions, like, a way that they're touching me wrong, um, a way that I just feel, like, filled with fury. And truthfully, I just feel like saying, like, fuck off and pushing them away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And as you're, as you're noticing that energy, mm -hmm. how do you feel towards it? Um, like, this is the best way to be seen as, like, a sociopath. <laughs> like, like, who doesn't want to be touched? It's, like, not like in puppies. Like, what's wrong with you? And, um... Okay. Yeah, just, so like... And I also am familiar with it, and I'm, like, gotta wait it out. Can't show it, you know? So I'm, like, sort of in my head like clawing at mm -hmm. things and waiting and then until I can move um okay until I can so, like discreetly move and get the touch away okay yeah. so th there's this part that says wait it out don't show it this is kind of trying to manage this fury yeah and then you have this other part that's uh sounds kind of judgmental of it of like well if I'm feeling that way that's that's sociopathic there's something wrong with me yeah right or it's wrong to feel that way Right. Like, just, I don't want to get in trouble. Like, any marriage book is going to be like, you should, you know, there should be healthy touch in the house. You know what I mean? And hmm. so I'm like, you know, trespassing against the laws of relationships. Okay. And which of those two parts feels strongest in you now? You mean the fury or the judgment? I mean, of the, fury? I mean yeah. the manager, which is saying don't show it, and the uh, yeah. judgment. Ah. Um, I think the manager. Mm -hmm. The manager. Yeah. Right. I'm, I mean, I've never in my life, like, taken someone's hand and just pushed it away, you know? Um, so okay. yeah, so like, wait it out, wait it out, wait it out is, you know, definitely the way of managing it. Yeah. And how do you feel towards that manager? Um, it's 
feels sort of like she's like this, <laughs> like anti-feminist like holdover that just got stuck in my head and she's like like be polite you know let this happen let that happen you know don't embarrass him um uh and also like be tough like you're not like some just like prissy you know little like Christian girl like you're fine with being touched you know like it ha- it just carries so many um it's just something that got really really lodged in there um and I guess okay so how do I feel I feel like um I feel like she's just like terrible school teacher like or something or like a terrible Mm -hmm. like christian extend person even though she's saying wait it out i mean yeah i don't know what it is like some like terrible repressive okay yeah just like someone saying like take the chains like that like just take the bit Mm -hmm. you know get in there do it. That's what you're expected to do. Do it. Right. Complete the task. All, right. All right. So then there's another part that says that's terrible. That's repressive. Mm. Yeah, but not present in the moment. Okay. Oh, 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 that's that's that that is how I feel about that part. Um, hmm. Yeah. So there's. I mean, yes, I feel like that part is repressive and terrible, but okay. really in there. Yeah. And that is how you currently feel about that? Yeah, actually. Okay. Okay. I'm going to suggest that's a part. Okay. Okay. And we can, we can examine that. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a bit blended with. Yep. I can see mm-hmm. that. Which is fine. So yeah, maybe you can just ask the one that thinks she's terrible, thinks she's repressive, to give you space to unblend and see if she'll let you get to know a little bit about this managerial school teacher. Ah, okay. Yeah, I think I can do that. I think she and I can do that. Great. Okay. How are you feeling towards that part now? The school teacher. She just seems to have a lot on her hands and she's kind of like, she's just, she actually looks like my first grade teacher. Um, she just has all this, I don't know. Uh, I'm feeling like she's like busy and um, just has too much to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's like, that... yeah, I feel like she's a teacher that like doesn't have enough time for me, but I can also sympathize that with her because I see that there are too many other students in the room. Okay. Does that feel like it's coming from a place of compassion from you? Yeah, actually. Okay. Um, although it also, although by sympathizing with the adult, like, oh, I get it. She doesn't have time for me. I'm also possibly repressing my desire for attention. Hmm. Okay. Well. So it might not be compassion. It might be more like. Uh, swallowing my own, <laughs> my own pain or something. Like even going further. Because it feels yeah. like she's saying like. Um this kid has this problem and it's a legit problem and this one has this other problem, but you over there, person who like doesn't want someone's hands on your knee, Mm -hmm. just wait it out. It'll end your problems. No big deal. Yeah. Um, And so I'm like, I'm not getting good advice, but I'm also being very managed. Right. Um, And the concern is that if you 
acknowledge and show compassion for her that that would be siding against or continuing to repress another yes. part? Yes. Yes. Okay. That would be like yeah. fighting against myself. Yes. That's right. Mm-hmm. Or some okay. or a part that I that I feel very close to. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if it's if it's real compassion and if it's real self energy, then you can have that for all of your parts simultaneously. Right. So right. There's we not can a come side. to yeah, we can understand this part and appreciate it and care about it and want to help it out. Yeah. W- without hurting the other parts. Yeah. Yeah, that's oh, I hadn't that's that's an incredible insight. Um because even by saying anti feminist, I'm like putting mm-hmm. people on sides mm-hmm. and saying yeah. like, well, she's like this, you know, throwback school mom person and mm-hmm. you know, this other part is on the right side of history or something. Um right. yeah, the the idea that there are no sides among the parts and that I can hold them all in compassion is really amazing. Um yeah. all right, let me let me try again to see where I see the school teacher part. Um, you, meant, you mentioned seeing that she's busy. Yeah. And you know, it's okay. Yeah. I can, I can have compassion for her as someone who like needs to give guidance and advice to so many to so many parts that are needing like social guidance to get through the world. Like, should I write a thank you yeah. note or should I, you know, that or at least it, that's what this part thinks. Right. She, you know, right. she could be wrong, but she could be that's wrong. where yes. she is. Yes. And so mm-hmm. like, I, yeah, I can definitely, I can even have compassion. I can even sympathize with like not being able to um, do it right every time, <laughs> like give the right advice, you know? Right. Um, right. Okay. So see if you can yeah. extend so, extend that compassion to her. And if she's been listening, see if any of that checks out with her. Are we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this, that's good. I can see her as like a, a mom like me who like, if she, yeah, like if she was another mother and she was like, I have four children and one of them, you know, asked me if I 14 is too young to date or whatever. And I, that gave her the wrong advice, you know, and I would be like, oh, forgive yourself. That's fine. Like, who knows where these lines are, you know, like Mm -hmm. you're just like passed away on on too many moral questions for one busy person. And, um, and, uh, yeah, I think that is a way that I can completely have compassion for her. Okay. How do you feel about hearing from her? I feel good. I feel okay. good. Yeah. It's like there's so, this moment when I like, but when I, I think this happened last time when I see a part and have in self, have self energy where they seem kind of funny to me. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. I've heard other of your clients do it too. Mm-hmm. Like just sure. like, oh my God, that per- that part has seemed so threatening. And now they seem kind of cartoonish, you know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you've kind of changed changed seats. Often when the protectors are doing wow. their thing, they're in charge and and I feel small. And then yes. when we realize that that they that we can switch roles, they suddenly kind of seem smaller or seem uh we can handle them. They're their parts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I see her having to answer to like other parts and like, and also just, wow, she's like a public school teacher, like so overloaded. And yeah. yeah. So what does she want you to know about herself or her role? She wants to know that she wishes she had time to understand like the intricacies of, you know, the part, the situation of the part that doesn't want to be touched. Um, 
but she'd been giving this just these directions just to like manage the classroom Mm -hmm. but she you know she wasn't sitting down and really seeing this part yeah can she see you is she aware of you there uh, like for her it seems unheard of that she would be seen and respected um so she's amazed like almost too much to believe she sees herself as like hated Hmm. but she's really grateful and her shoulders relax yeah just let her know that you've you see how hard that's been for her yeah And she's like, <laughs> she's like, look, this is what I need. I need another pair of hands in this classroom. I need an aide. I need a guidance counselor. I mm-hmm. like, I cannot do all this by myself. Right. And, she, and, you know, she said she wanted to understand these other parts. And she's been playing this managerial role. Right. And my que- my question was, does she see you? And does she see your uh, capacity to understand parts. Does she see you as maybe being up for that job? Yeah. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's also like, I'm glad to be seen and send more resources. You know, right. it's like, right. yeah. She needs like chalk. She needs like, you know, books. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I she she's she's super happy that that I'm here to help. That's great. And what does she think about you going to that part that has that fury? Um She didn't even really know that that part of all of them was hurting. So she's she's glad that she's glad I want to work work with it because she's mm-hmm. done all she can. Yeah. Great. There's some oh. rambunctious parts that she's been managing that have taken her attention. And she what would she, li- what would she like to do? If, what would she like to do if she didn't have to manage any parts? What would she uh, like to do with her energy? <laughs> I can't believe that I don't, I'm not a teacher. I don't know anything about schools, but I feel like she's like, I'd like to, you know, architect a new program in language arts. Like she's just suddenly like, oh, I have all these ideas about education and I want to, work on bigger stuff and get out of the classroom <laughs> yeah and she also has <laughs> that lit- she also has that literary creativity that we've seen in other parts oh yeah 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 maybe do some writing um yeah uh, yeah like have ideas instead of just having to do classroom management um right yes and be taken seriously for her, her ideas she's like a little bit stooped and Mm -hmm. heavy you know and like and she's you know she's like in her 70s and the prospect of being like writing a book or consulting or on you know setting up a new program she really likes that great she's not ready to retire which is interesting she's got like some purpose for her later years right yeah, so it's just something you could offer her is just help in doing that management part. And of course, we'll yeah. do it a different way. But the idea is that she won't have to manage. Yeah. Wow, the idea that I can be um, this compassionate 
to her and open to her without, like you say, siding against myself or mm-hmm. siding against that other part mm-hmm. is, is amazing. Because, of course, yeah. like, yeah, of course, like showing compassion for her doesn't mean the other part has to just suck it up and let herself be touched any which way. Right. You know, but right. for some reason, it's always seemed that way in my mind. Right. Yeah. And as we've gotten to know her, like her, her, she's not, she's not telling you all this stuff about you need to be touched. Like she's talking about managing and, uh, yes. and create creating. And, you know, she has so many other sides of her. Right. When she doesn't have to worry about that one problem in the classroom. Yes. It's really not her, the, not her thing. <laughs> the fury part has been like seething, but not mm. like acting out. So, mm-hmm. you know, because she's also like, oh, I, you know, I'm so glad I can like, you can get the help you need. Um, because the, <laughs> the part that doesn't want to be touched has basically been like, this is very mature, but like giving her the finger under the table. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, just like, uh huh, I hate you, but I'm going to be nice to your face. Um, right. And so it's news to her that this one needs attention. Um, so, yeah, I'm really liking her, her whole like, I've got like purpose now in my retirement and I can leave the classroom and get hands. You're going gonna, gonna to take 10 parts to do my job. <laughs> Or, or oneself. A huge, or oneself, exactly. Or one huge self that has infinite amounts of uh, chalk and like a gerbil for the corner of the room. Yeah. <laughs> like, stuff Again, I, I, I think um, we might be surprised that your way of leading other parts might not look like her way. Ah, yeah. They might right. not need. They might not need the gerbil in the books. Maybe they do, but we'll we'll let them <laughs> tell you. Yeah, you mean self? Oh, uh, the, we'll let those, those parts. other parts oh, tell right. self what it is that they need. <laughs> they might not need a gerbil. You're kidding me. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, that's a very good point, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it sort of feels like she's been improvising with, like, what she was given, you know? But now she Mm -hmm. wants to create something new, and she's willing to have the classroom recreated in some way. It's funny, it's a very, it is the the formal classrooms that I grew up going to. Um, Mm. And, yeah, there's no thought that it could be, like, reimagined um but she's happy to have it done that way yeah okay is there more you'd like to learn from her or should we turn to that fury part or another part i just gave it like got her into this like super cool office like or i don't even know if it's an office it's like this indoor outdoor space where she can like do big thinking about how to teach language arts. <laughs> so um, she's fine for now. Okay. So the fury part? Yeah. Oof. How are you feeling towards it? She's just like, she's a little ball of seething hatred. Like, fire and hard hard like just get the fuck away from me um but she's like smiling and faking it but a little less she's smiling and faking it less because now that the teacher's gone um are you okay with that are you okay with her um putting putting down the mask and just showing you how she really feels I'm a little concerned because, yeah. like, I can almost see her, like, I don't know, we should or shouldn't leave this in, but I can almost see her, like, opening fire in a classroom. Like, she's so fucking mm. mad. 
you know? Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm literally just seeing like a school shooter in the making in her. Um, uh-huh. I'm glad she doesn't have a gun. Yeah. Um, yeah, just like powerless and furious. I mean, I'm, I'm worried. I, I'm, I'm worried because me, I am scared of her. I'm scared. Okay. And I also feel like I'm not good at with furious people. Like I just don't mm-hmm. know how to disarm various people. I am. Okay. Yeah. And it also sounds like there may be still that part that has the view that this part is sociopathic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we have yeah. some, some judgment, some fear mm-hmm. and a, a belief that, or concern that you might not be able to, understand and help this part. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, let's let's welcome all those parts. Okay. Let them know that it's okay. It's okay for them to feel that way. That it makes sense. If you haven't had this experience or this contact with this part, their concerns make sense. Yeah. The concerns are a lot from the other parts in the room, like the other right. students. Um, I mean, I'm just like my the image in my head is so much of just like just a totally wild school shooting, like like pressing in on on her, you know, just before she like opens fire and all of them mm-hmm. are on edge and like, you know. Mm-hmm they're pretending or sort of have been coached on what to do in a situation like this, but really everyone like can knows how like terrible and bloody and be. Right. right. And they can have all their they they can have all their feelings. I just probably want to keep an eye on how scared they are. Yeah. Yeah. See if you can just get them to notice you. You're the one who can go to parts mm-hmm. before they explode and understand yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Just telling them like this situation doesn't have to unfold in the works in the way that you're imagining. Like I, I got this. Yeah, that's that's helpful. Yeah. And if I'm I'm thinking like what's the worst case scenario? Even if this part is homicidal, wouldn't yeah. you rather know wouldn't you rather know uh yeah. know it than than not? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah she just now I'm sort of with her a little bit. She's like um sort of seeing that like it's been years of like near daily someone saying like accept this kiss or this hug from this or that adult or this you know and every day you know she's just like okay I'm gonna wait that one out I'm gonna wait that one out I'm like sit for it I'm not gonna move I'm not gonna push the hand away and then yeah um and also I'm not describing some like intensive sexual abuse just more like a kind of like um be sweet kind of thing you know like Mm -hmm. just be there when they pinch your cheeks or smile for the camera or whatever that kind of thing and so she's Mm -hmm. like become madder and madder each time um and how are you feeling towards as you see her having to deal with that for so long Yeah, I mean, I'm sympathetic. It feels like, um, you know, those statues? You know, those statues that like people rub the nose of them or some part of Mm -hmm. them for luck and it just gets all worn down. Mm Let's say it feels like various parts of her body, like her elbows and her nose and everything has just been like rubbed down by people that like just took advantage of her. 
And she's frozen and unable to react. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's a lot of compassion. Great. Yeah, just stay with her. Tell her that her feelings are okay with you. She can let you know whatever she wants. Yeah, she's, she's, she's glad to say that. She also just sort of pointed to her like shiny nose that's been rubbed down and was like, not thrilled to look like this, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but she's starting to relax. Do you see about how old she is? Yeah, she's six. Mm-hmm. Six, six or seven. And she said these other parts trying to manage her or yeah. accusing her or saying it's not right to feel that way or are scared of her. Right. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it's just a sad loop because they, they're a little scared of her, so they try to, like, soften her up by right. saying, like, you know, come sit on my lap. And hmm. that she does that because she doesn't want to anger them. And then that makes her more mad. And then they're more mm-hmm. intimidated. And then they ask for that to soften her up, thinking, like, Right. So you just let her know that you're not going to do that. And that you've seen how she's been treated. You've got these other parts to step back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not trying to control her. I don't Mm-mm. need like lavish shows of physical affection or any. Um, and. Yeah, she can be kind of chill in her chair and have as much space around her as she needs. Or she likes that. Yeah. And you could just stay with her and ask her what it's been like for her. And just to let you know all about it so that you really understand. And you don't have to share it all with me or any of it. It's just, you know, like, this was like, it's unbearable. I mean, I can't, um, I'm so little, I can't stand up against these things. And everything is, exists to control me. And that's how it's going to be for a long time. <laughs> Yeah. And it makes me think, she says, it makes me think, it makes her think that some kind of crazy radical action like screaming or, or like, or shooting a gun is the only thing that um, could undo it because otherwise you just swallow it, swallow it. And so... Right in an effort not to do those things, she just has continued to swallow it and made the rage right. worse. Right. Just let her know you see that and how hard that's been. Yeah. 
Yeah. How are you being with her? Is there proximity? Do you feel close to her? Yeah, I sort of pulled up. It. She's still in her desk at her like little, like kind of old-fashioned school desk. And she doesn't right now want to move. Um, and I sort of crouched down to talk to her, but I feel like I felt a bit uncomfortable. So I just pulled up another chair, but I'm not too close to her. Like maybe like six feet, like bend down the Okay. Um, you, you could offer um, to meet her wherever she'd like to. If that's if that's right where she is, that's fine. If she'd prefer some different scenery. Ah. Uh, Just a place to talk with you. Yeah, she definitely wants something that's like, um, <laughs> where she's not like basically strapped in for like some kind of desk or car seat or like place that's meant to keep her body fixed in one place. Um, but she yeah, also said she like, didn't want to move, so I know. I want to make sure that we're respecting that. You know, she doesn't have to do anything she doesn't want to do. Yeah, maybe you could ask. Maybe you could ask what what she's afraid of happening. If you know what what is that part of her that doesn't want to move? Mm -hmm. What's the concern? Um, she just she feels like she's not allowed to to like get okay. out of that chair. And so yeah. now that if I give, if I sort of give her a license to go yeah. outside, she is tentatively like, "Well, oh, this is pretty cool. Like, yeah. And it's go know. outside with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. For this like hill that you can kind of roll down for a grassy hill. Um, she didn't know she had a choice about moving. Well, she might not have had a choice before. Yeah. With all these parts managing her. Mm -hmm. How's her level of trust for you? Is there more she wants to tell you about what it's been like to be her? Yeah. Uh, she just said she's been hiding a lot because recess wasn't doing it for her. Like she had to, she had to keep faking her at recess. And she's also like, when I found her, she was in the very back left corner of the classroom and she just like hides and, you know, periodically gets told that she just needs to endure more touch and it feels like the best she can do. And she, um, yeah, like she hadn't been able to find herself in any part of the day, like any part that felt really freeing. Um, She does get that I'm a lot older than she is and that I have found all kinds of mm -hmm. places of freedom. It's also so psyched that like she gets to realize she'll be an adult sometime. Mm -hmm. She's not yeah. like being a child. She's not like being small. She's not like being stuck in that seat. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder who she would be if she just didn't feel small and didn't feel stuck. Maybe we can find out. Has, has that experience that's gone on for her, that unbearable experience, has that caused her to form any beliefs about her or her world? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, definitely, um, you 
you know, just you have to take a lot of shit without complaining. Like, even right now, I can almost blend with her on that. Like, if the choices are just endure it or complain a lot about it, it seems like those are two really bad options. <laughs> but in my blended state, I'm just like, I probably would choose to have endured it too. But complaining just seems off the table. But anyway, her so her belief is that complaining is even worse than what she's been dealing with. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. It's good that you're checking for that blendedness. I mean, that could just be empathy. I mean, I mm. would say the same thing. Yeah, endure if if complaining is off the table. If there are worse worse consequences for that, then yeah. I get that you would have to endure it, and how yeah. unbearable that would feel. Yeah. Yeah, she's really excited that the, at the prospect that self just actually tuned into her and saw and really got what, it. Yeah, without oh, right, without her having to like file a claim or like sound an alarm, you know. Right. Right. Um, right. You know, because that, that was. That's that the yeah. That's the thing that, that she doesn't she, right. Yeah. The complaining is off the table, and so yeah. and she's felt like she doesn't have anyone to complain to. She doesn't have anyone to air her grievances to, and right. now here you are able to get it without her having to feel like she's breaking any rules. Yeah, yeah, and also I'm just asking her what it's been like for her. Mm-hmm. So it's not like she filed a complaint if that makes any difference like she's just right. like six, right so like she didn't have to be like some crazy squeaky wheel like right. self i just went to her and so she is pretty excited to get to tell her story me too this is exciting <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes yeah. yeah is there more she wants to tell or does she feel like you get it She feels like I get it. I mean, she, I think actually self is kind of seeing that sort of consistent what you said with what you said earlier, like this isn't about taking sides. Um, and she's been seeing all these like, uh, zero one situations or, or have zero sum game. I don't know if that's it, but like mm-hmm. you can either complain or endure, you know? And mm-hmm. both of those are bad. Or like before it was like, I have to choose between supporting the manager or supporting the, you know, this part. And what I feel like, what I feel like this process is doing is sort of dissolving those kind of false divides or something, mm-hmm. you know? Earlier, earlier you were asking is she made of stone? Is she just clad in stone? Yeah. Do you have a better view of that mm. now? I mean, before she was like really looking like that statue, which is like probably more bronze because it's like the nose that's been rubbed down is, you know, sort of bright bronzy color. Um, but that's all gone. I mean, she's like out on this particular grass and she just looks like a kid. I mean, she looks like, I don't know where that Sorry. went. It just fell off. <laughs> um, okay. So it sounds like a lot of things are going well in this relationship. Um, <laughs> yeah. if, you'd, if you'd like, <laughs> and if she would like, we can go through or at least offer some of these other uh, processes that often we do with exiled parts. I love that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So one would be to go back into her time and be with her in the way that she needed someone. Yeah. 
just ask her to take you back to those places, any of those events, memories, times she felt she couldn't complain, mm-hmm. or that she was just furious or hiding. Mm-hmm. Right. And just, and just yeah. be there for her in whatever way she needs. She, she really just wants like a um, just interesting, competent person to talk to about ideas. Like she mm-hmm. like loves the idea of just being taken out of the classroom for just some kind of walk like down in this like pond we used to like a recreation area um Mm -hmm. so it wasn't that far from the school but it's sort of more a summer thing and also like no pressure to do the or just like particular wow I haven't realized yeah this is where this is the exact spot where she has like not great feelings about just having to hold on to men to swim um just like uh yeah so you, she wants to just yeah am I what is that somewhere to go back and be with her also yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a either or in that situation too, which is like, um, my dad is like saying swim to me, um, out deeper and deeper in the water, and he's like a really good swimmer, and I'm like losing my breath. And then he's just like, you can just cling on to me instead of like turning back to the shallow water. And um, I don't want to, but I'm not sure I have the energy to make it back to shallow water. And I'm starting to get a little scared. And I really just like don't want, it's like touch him or drown. Okay. And so. And what does she need? She needs a very clear thing. She needs like a floaty or like an inner tube or like a lifesaver or some okay. thing that so she can like until she learns to swim better. Yeah. She can, and she, and can, she needs she yeah. needs someone who recognizes that and provides that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel like self is like on this dock. I just can see this so clearly. Um and is like looking at the situation, recognizing her like nervous eyes about having to make this choice and then just mm-hmm. like throws her this like fun floaty and then she can just like hold on to it and kick or even yeah. like let her legs hang down. She really loves the water. She mm-hmm. just wishes it didn't involve other her. people controlling her so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And is there um, anything else that she'd like to change about that scene? Is Is there a message to send to dad or anyone else that she wants you to talk to or change about that? Like, um, self can be like, I think it'd be better for her, like to have kickboards or like, um, you know, other floaty devices while she's learning to swim, um, so that she can get her independence because the fun of swimming is propelling yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? And um, she'll get her confidence better. That's like. And do you feel like you're in that scene? Like, like. I'm just I'm just wondering if this is a hypothetical. This is what self would do, or if you are with her in that time, do. providing oh. 
providing the things that she needed then. Yeah. Um, yeah, sort of someone to, um, I mean, I guess like take my dad aside and explain like even swimming is not about getting affection. <laughs> like it's like, um, there are better ways to keep swimming. And then let me take over. I'll teach her to swim. And how's she like that? She likes it. Yeah. Especially as long as it's just about like handing her a kickboard and letting her figure it out while like I keep an eye on her to be sure she doesn't drown. Right. Like she yeah. really likes teaching herself stuff. Yeah. So she'd like that that space that you could provide where yeah. even though even though you're not uh touching her, she actually feels safer because you've yes. provided the things that she needs in that. Yeah, it self sort of feels like just like the whole pond of self. Like this whole <laughs> funny, right. funny pond that I like Yeah. She can't drown I, she can't drown there, right? Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's yeah, not impossible. with your presence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, right. And um, and also, Soph's just sort of standing up on the dock. Um, while she, by the way, while we've been talking, is making very good progress. Scissor kicking with the kickboard. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It looks like uh, if my dad can is controlled too. The dad figure is happy to like go swim laps elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that she wants you to do for her or with her back in her time? Um, anything else that was hard for her? Just, like, keep an eye on her lifeguard style. You know, like, the way a lifeguard could, like, tell if someone's having, like, the remotest bit of trouble in a pool. That's right. But doesn't, you don't need to, like, scream out for them. But, right. like, I'm not sure that kid getting in there, you know, mm -hmm. just being on top of it and knowing that someone else is, like, looking out for the big dangers so she can experiment and teach herself stuff and read and... um You know, just like a less fewer interventions. Mm -hmm. I feel like as a kid, it's like I just am lot later in my life. I just feel like I was always like caught, called on the carpet for some misdeed and um, didn't yeah. like the interventions. You know, right. the teachers like all coming together to be like, she's a problem. Instead um, of letting her be. Her yeah. and just being a lifeguard, that's what she needed was yeah. that loving but not on top of me uh, attention. Yeah. And also, mm -hmm. like, also the confidence in her that, like, you're going to figure this out. You're not going to drown and need, like, you know, like, I, I'm watching you. Your kick is getting right. stronger. You know, you're, you, we'll figure out the strokes. You don't need yeah. all these hands on you. And, you know, that's giving her confidence. And since I'm looking out for her that to be sure she doesn't drown and that downside is taken care of, right. she has, there's a lot more possibility for upside. Yes, yeah, yeah. the red kickboard. My God, it's like, I mean, that is a real life thing, the kickboard, and it's just some specifics coming back. And this pond is so muddy, but it, I gotta say now it has some self energy that's like really making it a little more sparkling. Mm -hmm. So anything else she wants you to do for her or with her back there? Anything at all? I mean, just some cool, fun summer things, like just have a picnic at the back at the beach and then sit in the grass and like yeah. let her think about and and Yeah. The, that's the next step is just 
to set up an environment that is just what she wants. Yeah. A lot of times that also kind of includes inviting her into, into the present. She can be whatever age she wants, but mm. she doesn't have to be back in that time if she doesn't want to. Interesting. She can be, she can be six and be with you today and be in whatever pond and beach and <laughs> library that you create with her today if she'd like. Yeah. Yeah, like I see her as at this dinner that I like with friends that I went to last week where like everyone was just so interesting and engaging and like interested in sort of developing thoughts collectively, you know, like ideas. Yeah. And what she said she wanted someone to talk to, some interesting exactly. people. Yeah. 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 And it was like someone had just run some 110 kilometer race in China. And like everyone just had all these cool stories. And she was just sort of wrapped and excited about like understanding and try, like just the possibilities of like how big the world is and how exciting. And it was like the food was delicious and the city she doesn't know very well. And, or I don't know. I mean, I actually did that. But she mm -hmm. seemed like her energy seems seemed to be there too. Um, so yeah, like right. some yeah, there's easy access to friends and people who have like got cool stories and ideas. Mm -hmm. And her being able to kind of partake without all that fear that that she's not competent, that she's a sociopath, that yeah. she's all these other that she has to. Uh, be touched by them right I mean what's interesting is it doesn't the touch stuff it doesn't really seem like she just does she seems fine with being touched or not being touched yeah yeah it sounds like it might have been you know the touch is just kind of a physical it's a symptom of yeah kind of more emotional stuff that she's dealing with yeah, like just putting up, putting that. up with being touched is just one of the ramifications of that. Yeah, just is all the like sit there and take it, like mm -hmm. you know, finish your subtraction test and like hand it in, and then sit in your like tight chair where you're like locked up close to the desk, and yeah. um, and yeah, and the touches of other people are. Just, just one of yeah. those one more thing that you have to yes sit still endure. for and like not let other people do to you and make you do yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i mean nothing okay. feels like i mean just this is sort of silly but like that dinner that i just described in san francisco i pay i you know i treated people to it and like mm -hmm. just telling her that like you're a person that takes everyone out to dinner and picks the restaurant and um <laughs> you know, and like invites people and like, hears their stories. And like, that yeah. makes her feel really, really, really in control. And, and I mean, like, are really expressive and like, she mm -hmm. gives, you know, if, for some reason, the like idea that I paid for it is really, um, she loves it's powerful. That. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm the host. I'm the like, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And you're, and you're making decisions and setting things up the way that feel right for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's also interesting because even then and now, I don't mind initiating touch. Mm -hmm. I just don't like to not initiate. You know, I don't like to be on the <laughs> receiving end. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I, it, that also feels like hosting the dinner mm -hmm. is also part of like this is on my terms and my timing you know right. right and she that that i think gives her a great feeling of. it's funny so, i just uh -huh. also in life and in but also telling her this right now i don't actually like when people pay for things for me or when mm -hmm. they like drop, sitting in the back on like an uber car like someone else driving Mm -hmm. Um, I just don't like that. I just feel potentially controlled. So mm -hmm. I just, 
uh, yeah, so the idea that I would have my, like, she loves the idea that I just have my own money. Yeah. She just really and, likes that. And when there are times in the future when situations like that come up and that, and she or you or some other part has that feeling like being controlled, this is, this is how to get back to her is kind of meet her in this place. Remind okay. her that, remind her that you're, that she's not back in that classroom. She doesn't have to go back there that you yeah. can take care of her now. And that, and that you understand her in a way that she doesn't need to scream and complain for for you to understand the way that she feels. Yes. Yeah. There's one more thing you could offer her. Okay. Which is to ask where she's carrying any of this pain, any of these beliefs that she developed about that, the, for example, that would be the only way to, to deal with this is by screaming, where mm -hmm. she carries that in her body and how she'd like to give that up. Mm. All right. The first thing that comes to mind is in her hands. I mean, okay. I can just feel it right now. Mm -hmm. And... Um, it's like the give, it's like giving the finger under the table, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, just like tense, like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, she wants to give that up. Yeah, she does. Yeah. How would she like to do that to one of the elements or some other creative way? Tell me more about this process of giving up because okay. I think it might be the part that I understand the least. Like, yes, and it and it might be the yeah. most uh, mystic. I mean, it is. Yes, exactly, exactly. It's, it's it, but it comes from a tradition of shamanic practices, um, and it seems to work. So, you know, she's got this feeling in her hands. They're tense. They're throwing out fuck yous yeah. she says she wants to give it up and yeah. so simply asking how she would like to do that would she like to give it up to fire to water to air would she like to scream it out would she like to tell everyone fuck you would she like to go on a shooting <laughs> spree of some type i mean how right. does she want to give this to let this feeling out in a in a place that's safe with yeah. with you so that she so that she doesn't feel like she has to carry these burdens anymore and is the thing when you do it do you envision the thing being given up as an actual thing like or is it like the feeling in the hands or uh, i'm not sure i have a, a strong answer for that other than to just ask her Okay, I ha I just ha flashed on something. She is like, um, wants to melt down that bronze thing, like yeah. the bronze statue thing, mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. like some huge boundary. So to fire, great. great. Um, yeah, Do and that. Um, yeah. Tell her to do it until it's all out. Tell her to take anything that she wants to melt down and throw it in there. Hmm. Yeah, it's just a super sight that's becoming like liquid bronze and you could make it into something else if you want it. That's right, that's right. Like it's, you know, um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. I don't know how, if I know how Bronze right. And I, and, well, yeah. and, and I was just going to say, and I wouldn't have known to tell you to do that. This comes from the parts. Right. You know, like, yeah. it comes from the parts. <laughs> they know what they no, need. Exactly. I was like <laughs> looking at my hands, being like, how can I find the energy in my hands? And then suddenly she's like, hugged my sleeve and was like pointing to the foundry. Right. Right. So just tell her to do that. Do it till it's all out. Get any of those burdens, those beliefs, those painful memories or painful feelings that she feels like she's been carrying and been stuck with for so long. Get them in the foundry.
yeah, it's cool. Like mm-hmm. just bubbling liquid grass. <laughs> I really don't know if that's what it looks like, but that's what it looks like to her. <laughs> wow. How do they think of that stuff? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like, I imagine psychedelics right? were involved originally. But... <laughs> no, no, totally. Or maybe just childhood is like psychedelics. Or just stage. childhood. So, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It is definitely like some kind of psychedelic state. Yeah. It's also between she... bra- brassy looking and bronze because they're the pieces that are rubbed down. Um, uh-huh. God, so crazy. Yeah. Thanks for the trip sitting. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. You know, how, how's she doing? How how's how are things she's feeling? Just really, she's just really like, I made so much happen today. Like she's just Hell like, yeah. I thought this was gonna be another day and my stupid right. ass. And like right. here I am and I'm just like a god of like It's rock. huge. <laughs> she <laughs> is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's super you cool. could also it feels like you could, like she's like Athena or something. Yeah, <laughs> you could also um, you double back to some of these parts that we met on the way. The, yeah. the, the teacher, the parts that think she's a sociopath, the parts that think yeah. she's not competent, the parts that are scared that you wouldn't know how to communicate with her or help her. Yeah, and just get their attention. You know, invite them to witness the transformation yeah yeah it's really good wow oh my god i love this process <laughs> it's so yeah. good come yeah. on it is How really good <laughs> like the greatest thing. um yeah it it's is like it's crazy that it is like not illegal like a drug like because it's just so wild yeah well but it's and it's so immediately effective like just i just it feel is. great right now <laughs> yeah um, when you said not illegal you. my heart goes out to all the therapists out there who can't just pick up a phone and do this work yeah yeah but you mean because they're because of their regulations they can't they can't work in the way that i do or in oh, others yeah because like this process, even though it's supposed to be able to be done by anyone, is off limits in certain therapeutic. Mm, yeah, I mean, just if you're if you're licensed to work in certain ways, you can't make a podcast and I do see. all your work yeah. and, yeah, and yeah, just yeah. give it away. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, just thank you, thank you for this. Yeah. This the show that made me know that you're here and thanks thanks for another session. Yeah, thank you. I hope it goes well. Stay in touch with those parts. You know, and how do I make a new appointment? Just um if you don't have I'll send you more links. Yep. Okay. All right, good. I know mm-hmm. you're so booked. Um okay. Thank you, James. I'll thank talk you. to you again soon. Okay, bye. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. Do you want to help bring more self energy to the world? If you'd like to participate in calls or help out with this project in any way, I'd love to hear your ideas. Join the Discord server or contact me at james at liveifs.com. A huge thanks to our audio engineer, Yvonne, for your care and diligence in editing the calls. To every caller for your courage in sharing some of your parts. And to anyone out there getting to know their internal system, keep going. Who knows, that might be the most selfless, helpful thing you can do for others, and you're the only one who can do it. If you'd like to see us reach the largest audience, we must please the almighty suggestion algorithms at iTunes and YouTube, and they don't care about the power of IFS. They're looking for likes and shares and comments, and the sooner the better. Follow the links in the show notes right here in your podcast player to make your wishes known. And now, a minute of meditation. Or if you prefer, pull over 
you can do it in 60 seconds. Just click one of those links, they're right there, and give us a like or a five-star rating. It would really help. If you think this project is helping people, you're helping people by sharing it. Thank you.